Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing RTX 40, specifically news pertaining to a delay to its release. Yep, that's right. We're no longer going to be seeing these cards launch in July or possibly even August or September. Instead, the first graphics card which may see a launch from NVIDIA will be the RTX 4090 in October with November being the RTX 4080 and December being the RTX 4070. Now, these release dates may sound familiar to you because WCCF uh, Tech actually reported these several days ago, but now Copy T7 Kimmy is actually reporting the same thing and has stated that there has actually been some delays within NVIDIA's release schedule. I actually did a little bit of investigation regarding my own sources on this, and yeah, up until quite recently, the original launch window for these cards was indeed, well, the back to school window. And I've mentioned this several times on the channel, but reportedly over the last couple of weeks, something has changed. And I can't get an exact answer as to what it is, but there does seem to be a couple of possibilities. The first of which is, well, mining has pretty much dried up. And so I suspect NVIDIA at this point will want to just get rid of as many RTX 30 series of cards as possible. In fact, you've probably even seen the restocked, reloaded campaign that NVIDIA have been pushing recently. Well, that's obviously in an effort to just let people know that, yeah, you can buy these graphics cards at the moment. Another possibility is more to do with RDNA 3. We'll get into its release date in a moment, but RDNA 3's release date is a little later than the July slash August time window that had been discussed previously for RTX 40. And again, to match what I've said in a previous video, NVIDIA can't just completely and utterly change the specification of, let's say, the 4090. It can't just be like, okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to add an additional, like, 5,000 CUDA cores. I'm obviously being a little ridiculous with that number, but you get the idea. Well, what they can do is adjust things like clock frequency, power targets, and that type of thing to basically be as competitive as possible against AMD. What we are fairly certain of at this point, though, are the performance targets of RTX 40, and they are going to be very impressive. To my personal understanding, though, ADA Next, which is obviously the successor to RTX 40, is apparently another rather large jump as well. I've heard mixed things, whether it's MCM, honestly, I suspect we're not going to know for certain. I've had one person tell me it definitely is, and another one pretty much contradicting them, and they're both usually really good sources, so I'm going to say, uh, at this stage. But it is going to be very interesting because RDNA 4, to my personal understanding, is a pretty big redesign as well as the architecture. So it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how all of this shakes up in terms of the GPU market. Further to all of this, though, we also have a small update concerning Narve 3X. And it does seem like RDNA 3 does launch a little later. So basically, pre-production has started um, this month. Well, it will start this month. And then basically, we're going to see the cards launch most likely in October, November. This actually matches what my own sources have told me. I've mentioned this in a few videos by now. I do think that we're going to see Narve 33 and 31 launch first. Probably 33 was what I heard initially. And then 31. And then next year, we're going to see a Navi 32 launch so it's going to be a curious situation because basically AMD are going to be launching their high and um, and kind of lower end products first although if the performance targets of Navi 33 are to be believed it's going to be roughly on par with a Navi 21 based GPU so something like a 6800 XT or a 6900 XT in terms of pure raster performance and significantly faster than that when it comes to ray tracing. But while we're on the subject of AMD, just really briefly, there has been a rather interesting set of benchmarks which have popped up on the internet and this is actually, well, well you can see yourself, basically insider drivers which are comparing OpenGL performance. And you can see that, well, let's just say OpenGL has improved quite significantly. If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I actually put out a video to say that AMD are working a lot on their drivers. OpenGL, OpenCL as well, allegedly, is going to be also improving significantly in performance and so on and so on. And this is just perhaps an example of what we're going to be seeing from AMD with significant performance upticks to more legacy APIs. OpenCL isn't exactly legacy, but yeah, OpenGL is definitely more legacy. Um, 
At the end of the day, this is free performance and compute oriented applications which use OpenCL. Obviously, this is going to be a really big win for AMD. So this does match what I uh, reported already in one of my videos. Um, the source that I got this information from, actually a couple of sources, they told me that AMD have been really excited with this driver project, particularly given NVIDIA have had kind of a leg up in certain games and applications. And sure, if the game is older and, you know, it uses Open um, OpenGL, it doesn't matter so much. Like if you have like 100 frames a second or 200 frames a second and your, you know, your GPU is powerful enough to run the game at like 4K at 200 frames a second, it doesn't matter as much. But it is still important from just, well, efficiency standpoint, especially on lower end cards. And don't forget as well, Free performance is just a free performance. A small little addition to that, I'm just going to put this out now, um, because it's not really a big piece of news, but I've also heard that possibly in the next year or two, Polaris and possibly even Vega are going to go end of line for AMD's, yeah, for AMD's latest driver support. That's not really big news in terms of if you look how old those architectures are. It's not going to be tomorrow this happens. Um, but as I said, within the next couple of years, apparently maybe one year, possibly two years. Perhaps the last big thing I want to report on today is actually something Dylan Patel, aka Dylan522P, actually mentioned on Twitter. I'll leave a link, of course, to his Twitter account in the video description. Actually, someone else told me about this, but uh, I'm going to credit Dylan for this one because he mentioned about this yesterday and someone told me uh, today that they've also heard the same thing. But I'm going to give Dylan the credit for this because, to my knowledge, the other person may have found out via Dylan. Um, but yes... Argawall has left AMD and is now working over at Microsoft. Now, this engineer is someone who has actually been pretty important over at AMD. He basically essentially is the creator of the 3D vCache technology and also has created the elevated fan out bridge or E. FB, if you prefer. He's done a ton of stuff concerning advanced packaging, but now. He's working over at Microsoft. Of course, in his LinkedIn profile, he's not exactly stating what it's going to be used for. And I'm skeptical it would be something like an Xbox. Like, I mean, I guess technically speaking, it could be. I mean, for all I know, he's just going to be designing like some type of stacked chip which goes inside the bloody controller but let's just be honest it's not exactly a likely scenario instead he probably is working on something more to do with the cloud or something like that and microsoft working on custom silicon i believe is something that they've mentioned several times at this point in public it's going to be interesting to see how all of this goes because curiously you know microsoft have just announced like their plans their visions for the next 20 years on xbox and obviously one of the big things they're pushing for this is actually the cloud uh you know a cloud xbox like if you have a samsung tv you don't even need to own an xbox you don't need any of that you can basically just stream your games via xcloud essentially straight to the tv and it's pretty cool stuff like I still think we're pretty early for some of this, you know, to really shine. And obviously not everyone has, like, fast enough internet and all of that jazz. But it is pretty interesting to see what Microsoft have been working on. Um, obviously, we're going to be seeing the company announce all of their games. That is, Xbox announce all of their games pretty soon that they've been working on. Well, at least not all of them, but they're going to have their games conference. So, yeah. I mean, all cylinders are firing over at Redmond. But as for what Argawall is working on, we're probably not going to know anytime soon. Maybe the next couple of years, obviously, projects take quite a long time to come to fruition. With that said, though, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, hopefully, normal service shall resume for me in the next couple of days. I've been traveling a lot for personal reasons the last couple of days. I got back uh, today, basically, and just kind of, it's just been a bit nuts, but uh, hopefully. Um, I've now got the PlayStation 5 Pro script done, all of the editing has started on that, and blah blah blah, so yeah, um, I actually got some more information concerning the PS5 Pro, which is the reason that the script has been rewritten like three times at this stage, um, so, you know, for my sanity, <laughs> I really want it to be done, um, <laughs> for my sanity, if nothing else, <sighs> anyway, um, I'm gonna let you all go, take care of yourselves guys, have an amazing day, bye for now.